it is not uncommon at all for people to think that their dogs aren't food motivated. But what if I was to tell you that it's not so much about your dog not being food motivated and more about the things you're doing in everyday life that's teaching your dog not to take the treats. In this video, Instructor Meg's gonna break down exactly what those mistakes are that you're making and how to get your dog more food motivated so you can get back to amazing training. I'm Dan, welcome back to McCann Dogs. Stop overfeeding your dog. If you are offering your dog food, they are leaving food in their dish and are no longer interested in it, you are killing your dog's food drive. So when I offer my dog treats, when I offer my dog food, I expect them to eat it. Even for young dogs, we do not want to have uh, a dog that is uninterested in eating because you have given them too much. When I feed a meal, I'm going to measure that very carefully. And I don't give my dog any extras throughout the day. It's very important that you don't have an overweight dog. If you have a dog that is overfed, it's going to make them far less likely to find that, that food to be of value and they're not going to work for you because they're not hungry. We want to have a hungry dog. That's going to make them significantly easier to train. Plus, for their health, it's very important, even from a young age, that we do not let them get overweight. Every dog's different. So for some dogs, like a golden retriever, they would probably eat plain old kibble every single day of their lives, most of them anyway. Other dogs tend to be a little bit pickier. So I do think that it is extremely important that you have a hierarchy of rewards. So I know for my dogs, one of my goals when they're baby puppies is to, turn, is to determine what is like a level one or a level two reward? What is like a middle of the pack level five reward? And what will they do anything for? What is their number 10? But where a lot of people go wrong is they offer the number 10 all the time until the dog no longer cares about it. It would be like if you had chocolate cake every single day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. After a while, you kind of get sick of chocolate cake. So I like to have a variety of rewards that I know they will work for in low distraction environments, a variety of rewards that they'll work for in medium or a middle of the pack uh, at distractions. But then I need to know that I have a number of these number 10 rewards that I can rely on when things are really, really tough. You need to find the time of day or the environment or the reward which they do care about or changing the way that you do reward them. So for example, I know that my young puppy who's not terribly food motivated, that has a very small stomach, is not going to take food when we are in a distracting environment. I do know that he will take food two or three times a day when he's really hungry in environments that we have already worked in and that he's successful in. I actually would start out with a puppy that said, I'm not interested in food. I would start in the bathroom. I would start in the most boring room of your house where there's no distractions and there's no options for outside uh, distractions to come bug your training session. And I would try to find any behavior that they could do that I could reward. So maybe it's something as simple as they voluntarily look at me, I would say yes and feed that. If they don't want to take the food, sometimes you can stimulate it by even saying yes and tossing the food. By moving the cookie that way, it can actually make it a little bit more exciting. Uh, I will see if I can um, move the treat around a little bit. I will mix it with something that's maybe even higher uh, value if I need to. But I would say the most important thing is finding any environment that they will take food in and only practice there until you can reliably predict that they're going to take the treat from you. I don't want to offer a treat or uh, a meal, anything to my dog, if I think that they're going to say, meh, I'm not interested. I don't want to allow them to rehearse that. So until I'm confident they will take that treat in that environment, I don't train there. I only train in the environments where I know I can be successful. All of these concepts that Meg's talking about in this video are things that we cover in our online and in-person dog training programs. So make sure you check out our website, www.mccandogs.com to find out which programs perk for you and your dog. So uh, my little seven pound puppy has never really been fed um, any food out of a food bowl for the most part. Almost every single reward uh, or food item that he's ever gotten has been from me, from my hand. And the reason for that is when your dog only eats like a quarter of a cup at a meal, 
that's my entire training session for the morning. I'm going to use every little bit of his food for our training to build that relationship, to build that engagement. So I don't give a lot of structured meals, if any, to a small dog. And I only train him for probably about two or three minutes at a time. I think the max amount of time that he's ever been trained for, uh, for the last couple of months, has been about five minutes. And because of that, he has rehearsed taking the treats, being hungry. I actually try to feed him often after we've had some exercise as well. So I will play with him, engage with him, uh, take him on a nice long hike, and I make sure that he's really hungry, and then I do the training session with him. A lot of dogs don't have enough food drive because they don't get enough activity and, uh, and or stimulation. So I try to make sure that I offer only food from my hand and I make sure that he is in a state where he is absolutely starving when I offer it. Are you free feeding your dog? And what that looks like is a bowl, a dish, put down for your dog all day long and you might put the food down and have it completely full at all times. Or perhaps you do measure out their given meals, their breakfast and their dinners, but you put the food in the bowl, walk away, and again, the dog can pick and choose when they want to eat that food. The problem with that is that when you have food available at all times, the dog doesn't see that food as valuable. It's something that they have access to whenever they want. So why would they work hard for something that they can take whenever they want to? We never free feed our dogs. We only give our dogs our structured meals. If I'm training, I'll even take some of their food from their meal and I'll put it in my pocket and that's the training treats that I use for my puppy throughout the day at my home. The rest of their meal they can have in their bowl. But even where I feed them their meals is important. I don't take food, put it in a dish, and put it on the floor in my house. When I have a young puppy, I take that food and I put them in their crate. Two things from this, it helps to build value for the crate. So they say, wow, the crate's a really great place. I get all of these really great treats or food from there. But it also ensures that the dog doesn't have the option of having a little bit of food, maybe a couple of bites, and then choosing to walk away. They get that food for maybe five minutes while I'm making my breakfast or my morning coffee, maybe even 10 minutes if I get distracted with the kids. But then when I choose to, I'll come back to the crate, I will open it up, take that dish out, and that's the last that they're getting of that meal until the next time I offer them food. I might offer them food again in a meal form or it might be in a training form, but they don't get to just graze on that meal and walk away from it. That's going to decrease their value or work ethic for that food that you're offering. Now that you've learned how to unlock your dog's drive for food, it's important to unlock their drive for toys. And to do that, you're gonna to wanna to check out that video right there. And on that note, I'm Dan, happy training.